North Korea destroyed sections of roads and rail lines on its side of the heavily fortified border between the two Koreas on Tuesday in what South Korean officials have called a highly abnormal act and a violation of past inter-Korean agreements. It's the latest escalation between the two countries, which are technically still at war, but what has caused this most recent reaction? As well as blowing up roads and railways, North Korea on Sunday said it had put eight fully armed artillery units at the border on standby to open fire. And on Wednesday, these pictures were released as state media reported that around 1.4 million young people have signed up or returned to the military. Previously, similar claims during heightened tensions have been made. Such statements from the isolated state are difficult to verify. Earlier this month, Kim Yo-jong, the powerful sister of North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, called a military parade held in South Korea's capital for its Armed Forces Day a clown show, downplaying the South's military capabilities in a statement carried by state media. The build-up in tensions comes after North Korea accused Seoul last week of sending drones over Pyongyang, scattering anti-North leaflets. An analyst from South Korea said North Korea seems to be using the incident to rally people against the South, in line with its push to sever cross-border ties and promote a two-state system. An official at Seoul's Unification Ministry handling inter-Korean affairs said Pyongyang might be seeking to consolidate people's unity and build logic for a provocation by exaggerating tension against the South. There also seemed to be public pressure on North Korean leader Kim Jong-un over economic challenges, the official said. The neighbours have also clashed over balloons carrying trash floated since May from the north, which it said was a response to a previous anti-Pyongyang leaflet drop. The United States, South Korea and Japan on Wednesday announced the launch of a new multinational team, the goal to monitor the enforcement of sanctions against North Korea after Russia and China thwarted activities at the United Nations. Here's US Deputy Secretary of State Kurt Campbell. The potential for this to be a major uh, effort in tracking and uh, holding to account uh, steps that North Korea is taking across a range of uh, provocative actions uh, is real and we look forward to it taking shape in the months and years ahead. Earlier this year, Kim declared South Korea a primary foe and said unification was no longer possible. Seoul's defence ministry has warned if North Korea inflicts harm on the safety of South Koreans, that day will be the end of its regime.